Lord Jesus, we commit our lives afresh to you this day. Amongst the ups and downs, the twists and turns of life, Lord, comfort those who mourn. Comfort those who are struggling physically, financially and mentally. Lord God, pour your joy and peace into our lives. Thank you for our church community. Thank you that we can reach out beyond these walls through community engagement and mission initiatives, Lord God. Thank you that we can be your hands and feet in physical ways. Lord Jesus, help us to live life to the full. Help us to lead. Help us to point the way to Jesus. Help us to point the way individually that you are our hope and our salvation. So Lord, over these next few moments, inspire us and encourage us again from your word. That we can be your people of hope and your people of faith. And make a significant difference to the community around and about us because of Jesus. Who calls all to be saved. Come to him. Know him. Love him. Follow him. Lay your life before him. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for the many of you that um, travelled up to Cloudra during the week on a Thursday for Roger's funeral. Uh, a great time of celebration, a great time of hearing of a man's life and ministry. I thought I'd moved a few times, but I think he trumped me. Um, I didn't go international, but uh, I just moved around Australia. And so uh, if you were there, thank you for that. And, and it was a great time to hear of a man's life and love of ministry, his wife and children yeah, and grandchildren. So thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you as we continue to care for Carmen and her family and, and, and do that in many different ways through uh, phone calls, visits, food, whatever you want to do. Uh, they are certainly appreciative of that. So thank you for that. Today is Father's Day, so welcome. Have a good day, dads. Hope that's good for you today. Enjoy that. Granddads, uncles, significant others that have been a father figure in your life. So welcome. Today we start a short three-week message series I've called Live, Life, Lead. Oh good, there's something there. That's great. I believe God wants us to do better in life. To live it and to lead the way and to show the way of a healthy Christian, God-focused, Jesus-honouring experience. We must see the potential in people when others only see problems. We see hope when others see chaos. We see opportunity when others see obstacles. In John 14, Jesus is leading these disciples and now he's leading us. God's love must come first. And so in John 14, verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And this morning I want you to keep that focus, that is your focus and that is your theme. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. God knows our need for the cross, our need for Jesus, our need for salvation. If you love me, that should point us to Jesus. That should highlight your need for Jesus. If you love me, follow me. Do what I did. Come. Follow what I commanded, Jesus said. Stand for what he stood for. If you love me, well, well, I think I do. Anyone here today love Jesus? Well, maybe last week, but I'm not sure about today. Anyone? Gee, you're all very silent. I'll be, I'll be passing the mic around in a minute. That'll get me going. Look at those worried faces. They get scared when pastors move beyond here. I don't know why. But not today. You're safe, Carl. Don't worry. His love is true, isn't it? His love is sure. His love reaches out across time and space and connects with you and connects with me. If you love me, obey what I taught you. It's sure and eternal. 
and he demonstrated his love for us. Romans 5.8, no doubt a number of you know it, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm thankful about that. And as I consider Jesus and the work of the cross and his salvation and his resurrection and forgiveness and grace and hope and all these things roll off our tongues, but they're powerful and transforming. As I consider forgiveness today, I wonder where you've been wounded. Jesus said it was in his hands. When they saw his hands, they knew it was Jesus. Not an imposter, not a personator, not a fake. It was Jesus. They walked the road with him and now he was risen. They had to see something that let them know that it was Jesus. What he went through. How he suffered. What we keep doing is trying to prove God's presence by our successes. When it came time for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to prove his presence, he said, come, come, come look where the nails were. Come see my hands. See where they drove the nails in. See, it said they killed me, but I didn't stay dead. I was broke, but now I'm whole. I was dead, and now I'm alive. My scars, my scars tell a story. I'm not ashamed to show my scars. Christianity is not cosmetic surgery, so you can hide behind what you've been through. We've all taken some hits, we've all taken some knocks, we've all lost our way, get back on that horse and kept going. Jesus didn't come to conceal the pain, but to reveal his glory. But there was one who wasn't there. Jesus cares about the one who isn't there. Jesus cares about the one, and I'm glad about that. And we see in John chapter 20, verse 24 and 25, up on the screen there. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Poor old Thomas. He gets a bad rap, doesn't he? The doubter. Old doubting Thomas. Because people will label you by one moment in your life, one slip up in your journey. And these were the church people. Oh, poor old doubting Thomas. John's the only one that tells this. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus. If we're going to label Thomas the doubter, why don't we just call him good old doubty Didymus? That'll be good. Old doubt, doubting Diddy. I like that much better. That's much better for preachers, amen? Yeah. Hey, John. Good old doubting Diddy. That's what we're going to call him. He was not with the twelve when Jesus appeared. He wasn't there. Now Jesus and Thomas have something in common. They went to look for Jesus' body, remember? And he wasn't there because he had risen. And now Thomas wasn't there when Jesus appeared. It's been suggested he might have, didn't have much faith or had better things to do. But I don't think so. He just wasn't there. Because something greater is going to happen. A week later we read John 20, 26. A week later his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was there, good old Didymus, old doubting Diddy. What about scary Simon? Though the door was locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. What about locked door Levi? There's another good one. They locked the doors. They were scared. Friends, we all have doubts, don't we? We all have scars. 
We all have dysfunction. No hands? Okay. We've all been through stuff. Don't let the labels define you. Let Jesus redefine your life. Jesus Christ, my Saviour, had scars. Let's be honest. We all have scars. Let's call him Honest Thomas. Because he wanted it to be real for himself. Hey, you guys saw Jesus. I want to see Jesus. My risen Saviour, who I followed and served. I want to see where those nails were. I want to see how he suffered. Then I'll believe. So a week later, we read it. They're all together. Friends, God will lead you to a place where he wants to create faith in your heart. Jesus waits seven days. I'm sure he could have popped up sooner. But at times he makes us wait. But sometimes God wants us to walk and wonder. To walk and wonder. Not because he doesn't love you. Because if your faith needs an explanation, it cannot sustain you through the trials of life. So he waits. Anyone ever waited here this morning? Waited for those test results. Waited for someone to return your call. Waited for news after a job interview. Waited to be pain free. Waited to get better. Waited for a happier day. Have you ever had to wait? Jesus appears now and I'm sure Thomas was tired of waiting. In John 20, 27 and 28. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe, Thomas. Said to him, my Lord and my God. The doubter, no more. Today is the day of freedom. We've all been wounded. We've all been hurt and mistreated. Jesus comes and shows Thomas his scars. His scars. See where the nails were. There's a difference between being wounded and being scarred. Whatever has happened, whatever you're hiding from, Friends, show one another your scars. Show them what you've been through and how you've come out on the other side to live, to enjoy life, to lead the way. We need to be real and honest, not wounded lambs who've never moved on. What wounded you doesn't have to hold you. Forgiveness doesn't mean it didn't happen. And for some of you this morning, that's very important to hear. Forgiveness doesn't mean it didn't happen. Jesus didn't show up and say, oh, excuse me, what cross? Sorry. What crown of thorns? What beatings? He showed them his scars. We need to let go of what has wounded us and be free. But it will take time. I'm not one of those quick, quick pastors. She'll be right. Biblical principles need to be lived out daily and it is a journey. And some of you have got there. And some of you are nearly there. And some of you might be a week away, a month away, a year away, but you'll get there. On screen today, you don't need to be perfect to inspire others. Let people get inspired by how you deal with your imperfection. 
The hardest person to forgive is not your mother or your father, or that church or that friend or ex-wife, ex-husband. The hardest person to forgive is yourself. It's my self-inflicted nails. I have the hardest time letting go of, let me be honest. It's mine. I love Romans, Romans 8 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of sin. If I can read properly, it's always good. Through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Forgiveness takes faith. Friends, don't waste what God has given you. No more nails. Let me not waste what God has given me. Don't waste, we read on the screen there. Don't waste the season you're in. Don't waste it. But God is doing something. God is doing something special in this place. And when we chat, when we pray, and when we minister together, when we help people in need, when we care for loved ones who've lost their partners and husbands and friends, when the news is not good, we are there for you. Keep Jesus as the constant thing in your life. He loves us. He loves me. He loves you. See his hands. See his hands. No more nails. I don't change so God will love me. I change because, because God does love me. Let his grace pick us up. Plant you on a solid rock. God's grace empowers change in our lives. Friends, there have been a few detours, amen? There's been a few bumps in the road. There probably will be a few more. Maybe some dysfunction, maybe some miscommunication. But we're on the right path now. God bless you.